Okay, so recording is happening. Um, just a quick introduction. I am Dr. Kim Godwin. I am an instructional designer at MTSU Online. And with me today are Dr. Karen Hine and Tara Perrin, who are other instructional designers for MTSU Online. And they are going to answer your questions in chat because they are awesome. Uh, they are very good at keeping up with that. I learned actually recently that that is not one of my skill sets. Um, I get apparently get distracted. I know that shocks anyone who's ever met me. Um, I get a little bit distracted and then stop being able to follow them. They are very good at it. Um, so if you have questions as we go through this, please feel free to use the chat. Um, and um, the recording will be in our MTSU online YouTube channel, again, as a reminder, and it is set to public. Um, there are quite a few presentations and events and things coming up in the next few days and weeks and obviously months uh, through the LTN ITC as well as other locations. So we encourage you to go on that workshops calendar and take a look at what is happening out there um, and get you a little bit of extra learning as we get going. Today's presentation is, uh, is five for fall. Uh, quick tips in D2L and we chuckle because up until last week it was five. Um, but now it's seven. Um, so it's not that we don't know math. It's that a lot of really awesome things happened in the span of like 48 hours that we were like, well, we have to make sure that we add these things because they are the things that uh, can really make a big difference for you uh, as faculty and a huge difference for your students too. So we really did want to make sure that we added those things in so that you would know what some of those new additions to D2L were and how to use them and how to best support your students using them. So I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen. Um, and as with always, um, and if it's the first time you've ever been with one of us, um, we um, encourage you to, to if you want to minimize us uh, down in the corner of your screen and not look at, at me necessarily, but open up your own D2L, you are welcome to walk through these activities with us so that you can practice them as we are going through the process. Um, and that might help you too, uh, if you have questions or need additional information, you might know what those questions are. So I'm gonna share my screen, so feel free to minimize me. And it takes me just a second to do this because of the, the screen situation I have. If y'all have never seen my screen, y'all should come check it out sometime. Um, all right. Okay, well, it's, I go through this every time, don't I? Y'all talk amongst yourself for just a second. <laughs> okay, here we are. There, y'all know what it's gonna look like now, right? Okay. And switch. Um, where's my mouse? There it is. Okay. Okay, here we go. Ready? Um, the uh, first thing that we're going to talk about today is, um, see, right, five, okay, seven. Um, the first thing that we are going to talk about today is preferred name and pronouns. Um, and we wanted to go ahead and get this one out there uh, first. I don't know if you all remember from uh, late April, late April, because I'm sure you weren't thinking about anything that was going to be happening in August and April. So probably wasn't priority num number one for you. But um, the provost office sent us out a um, an email that talked about how students can now go and change their preferred name and banner. There is actually a link um, in that email. And since I'm sure that you kept it, because um, I know you keep everything that comes from the provost office, uh, we also have some really awesome resources that we're going to share with you at the end, um, as well as um, our um, all the resources that we talk about are also in our um, on our uh, mtsu.edu slash online. Uh, website. So any resources we talk about, you can find them there. But the preferred name information is actually going to be found in the one that says um, news announcement templates. Um, and this is one of the templates that we created for you. So you literally can go in and copy 
the information that we put on that little Word document for you and drop it right into a news announcement in D2L. And in it, it talks about how a student would need to go and complete the form to update their preferred name. So this is really great. Um, like, for example, my legal name is Kimberly and not even my mother calls me Kimberly. Not sure why they named me that if they weren't going to call it that. But um, so I would change mine to Kim. Um, so if a student goes by a nickname or they prefer to go by their middle name uh, or they are uh, possibly in transition or choose a different name, they are welcome to go and fill out that preferred name. The really great thing about that is that what happens in Banner, it then communicates that with D2L and it updates it as the first name in D2L. Um, so that helps you not have to remember um, if somebody doesn't go by their first name. Uh, you are, it makes it a little bit easier for you when you're trying to communicate with them and have that personal connection with your student. Uh, and then pronouns, that is very, very new in D2L. Um, our banner doesn't recognize it or doesn't share it with D2L, um, but D2L has a place where students can now go list their pronouns. So I'm going to show y'all how to do that. But as a reminder, it is in that news announcement template, um, we actually put the directions in there so that um, students can follow those specific directions. Um, and don't tell anybody in security that I saved my password. I'm that person. Okay, so I have to change myself to student to see it because of my status. So you would be able to right now as we're talking, if you wanted to, you can go up there to where your name is in that top right corner. And then um, you will go down to where it says account settings. I just need to switch to student real fast, but because um, it doesn't let me do it as as me because my settings are weird. So you go to account settings and then this page pops up and that very first one says pronouns. And then you get to make the choice uh, as you or your students get to make the choice whether or not they want their pronouns to be seen. If you would like your pronouns to be seen or if they would like their pronouns to be seen, you simply click the button right here because yours is going to be unclicked. Uh, unless you already knew about it, then you're going to want to click it, um, allow others to see my pronoun if if you want to do this. And then right here, a second ago when I said Banner doesn't transfer the information, so Banner doesn't transfer it. So when it says user my organization has on record none, that is because it's not pulling. We don't have it set up to pull from Banner. Um, so right now you don't have pronouns uh, and your students don't have pronouns within D2L. So you would choose the use different pronouns and then type in the pronouns that you prefer to have listed. Again, this is not something that's required, uh, but it's such a great way for us to show support to our students and especially students that that need to be able to share that, them having this opportunity is really great. And that does help us, especially in feedback and things like that during the semester, if we know how best to address our students. Once you have put in your pronouns, you simply hit save and close. Just like all things in D2L, it saves and closes. One thing to note about pronouns is that when they're in, once they're in there, it takes the overnight D2L update for them to show up. So if you save them right now, they're not going to show up until tomorrow. Uh, but I will show you um, a little bit about what they look like. So um, I will show you in my class list. There you go. So in the class list, they show up as the name. And then it has in the parentheses the she, her that I have listed as my pronouns. Uh, you can also see them from uh, discussions when you're looking at a discussion board. If you mouse over the student's icon um, where their picture is or their avatar or whatever they've chosen to put in there, when you mouse over that, it pops up there too, that it has their name and their chosen pronouns. Um, so that. We wanted to go ahead and get that one out there first because that is the thing that is brand new and it just happened on Friday. Um, so, right, that helped us add. Yay, get to seven. Um, so that is that one. I am now going to move on 
to um, discussion word counts and some quick grading tips. Who doesn't love a quick grading tip, right? Um, oh, and if y'all have questions again, I know I mentioned it, but please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, and at the end, because I've got a lot to cover in a short period of time, at the end, if you have other specific questions, we will try to go back to those um, if we didn't touch them during the time. All right, discussion word counts and quick grading tips. So one of the things that um, faculty have mentioned, I think like since words were invented um, was how best to count if you have word count minimums on your D2L discussions. So I'm gonna now show you what happened over the summer and you don't have to count anymore. It takes it just a second. Do you see it, Karen? Is it because I'm in a fake class? It's because I'm in there as a student. Why didn't y'all stop me? That's why I can't see it. Y'all do that too, right? Y'all do that all the time that you view things as students and you forget to switch back. I'm like, why doesn't it work? Also, you should all feel better about things that you do in detail. You're like, why doesn't this work? If I can't figure it out, don't worry. Y'all doing great. This is my job and I can't figure it out. <laughs> look, look what it does when you're in there as the right person. <laughs> right here in the middle of the, the information where it shows that Karen had posted in my um, development shell, it shows that she had posted 38 words. Um, so right there, if you are someone that really it's important to you that they have an exact number of words and that uh, or you're not sure, like you, it looks like people are definitely not posting the full amount that you're asking them to post, that's going to give you a really fast way to look at it without you having to sit there and literally be like one, two, three, four. Um, it's just right there. It's ready for you. So um, there is where your word counts are. And that is in all of the discussion boards as long as you're in there as faculty. If you're in there as student, clearly you can't see them. Um, so there's that. That's very helpful. Um, that was one of the things that instructional designers and D2L administrators have really been asking for for quite a while. So we were pretty excited when that got turned on this summer. Um, and then the other thing I was going to show you about discussions, and this is just one that kind of one of the ways that we recommend um, you can totally grade discussions any way that you feel most comfortable. Of course, we're going to tell you that rubrics are awesome and you should use the D2L rubrics because they're great. But one of the other things that's really fantastic about some of these things is um, have any of you ever spent time when you do the initial response and then one or two or more discussion uh, responses to their classmates that you scroll through like 40 pages of discussion threads trying to figure out if your students have actually done what you asked them to do. Um, if you have ever done this, this will solve that time for you. When you have this on your grading page that is the um, little bubble, the speaking bubble, uh, it, the orange dot just shows that it there's unread. It, but if you click right there, when it pops up, this um, this page, we have a rubric assigned to ours, so the rubric will pop up on the right-hand side, um, and this one actually happens to have five-star ratings, so if y'all want to know how to do that, we can tell you how to do that later. Uh, so when you're looking at this, what you see is the initial post, and then you see all of the reply posts. Everything that that person posted is in there in one place. You're not having to jump around and figure out where people posted or figure out where people did things. And your rubric is right there for grading. So you can literally just click in there, do your grading, hit your publish, and it will pop up on your grade book. So it's just a little bit faster uh, because once you do the first one, if you have multiple students in your class, up here in the top right corner are those arrows. Uh, there's only one student in this class, so it's a very small grading pool. Uh, but if you have more than one student, these arrows will just take you to the next student. You don't have to keep going back out to the grades. You don't have to keep going back to assess topics. You literally can just keep hitting that button and it takes you to the next one. The rubric is there on the right. Everything that that student communicated is there on the left, all on one big page. Uh, so that's part of why we really like that one, because we feel like it helps. 
uh, make things go a little bit faster. Okay, uh, next we have midterm calculations in the grade book. And as a piece of advice, don't be like me uh, and have like 50 million D2L tabs open when you're working in a tab. Because if you accidentally save in one and not, not really sure which one you're in, you could mess something up. So try to keep it to like one tab, but I'm not saving anything that's of great value. So just that's just a little side note. So midterm calculation. Um, this is also another one of those ones that if you go to the mtsu.edu slash online, that you will see this as one of the resources that we have available under faculty resources, online teaching resources. Uh, for a midterm calculation, we like to tell you this one at the very beginning so that when we get up on a fall break, you're not like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. Um, this does it for you. So we go to grades and then we go to manage grades and then you're going to go to new and you're gonna go to item. And when that comes up, we're going to scroll on down to the one that is calculated. We're going to label this midterm. We're going to spell it correctly, uh, midterm. And then what we do once we've put our title in the top is you just scroll down the page and then you select the ones that you want to have a part of your grading. So say I want those first four because that's how far I'm going to be uh, at midterm. You save and close. And then we'll go back and take a look at our inner grades and it will show up on our grade form. I told you all D2L is going a little bit slow today. So, um, so it is way over here on the right hand side. Uh, where it says midterm and it is showing that our student uh, Mo it has a 37.5 in the class because Mo has not um, fully completed very much of Mo's work um, so not doing great in this but that is way faster for you you're not having to go through and figure it out and if you have these amazing plans at the beginning of the semester that you're going to make it to this certain point before midterms and then I don't, something weird happens like, I don't know, what are the chances of another global pandemic, right? What if something crazy happens um, and we end up a little bit off kilter and you don't get all the way to where you thought you were going to get by midterm? If you want to change what it is that is included in your midterm grade, you simply go back to that manage grades, you go down to midterm, you edit, and then you uncheck the one that you don't want to include anymore, save and close, and you've now just updated your midterm again. So it's actually showing the actual activities that you want and the ones that you wanted to grade and have available. So that is how you do midterm. Um, we always like to include that one at the beginning because it y'all are going to need it in a couple weeks. It's only a few weeks. I know. Um, okay, here's another one that came up that I don't know that this is probably a chem error on my part, and I'll totally own that because I never thought about it, um, but I think it's one that's super important. Um, so private comments in grades, uh, and I'm going to show you all what that looks like here in just a second, but I wanted to talk to you about it first. So if you are in your if you're in your grade book and you are using the uh, assess or grade that is from the top of your grade book, you use the drop down and you choose to assess there. Um, and then you are opening up the individual students feedback options. There are two boxes. One says private and one says feedback. Feedback is what goes to the student. It doesn't go to the whole student population. It goes to that student. Um, private, the only people or person that can see it is the grading faculty member in the class. So private is where you can put notes to yourself um, about things that maybe you discussed with the student. Like if you had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the student, you want to add a, a couple of notes. Um, if you did um, a review or y'all went over a draft of something and you wanted to put some things in D2L that was a part of that grade so that you remembered when you go in to grade it later, um, private comments is a great 
place to put that or private feedback is a great place to put that. Um, just remember that if you have a TA grader or a co-instructor or other instructors in your class, they can see private. It is only that students can't see private. Anybody that has grading capabilities in your class can see the private comments. So that's one aspect of it. We've heard that there were some confusions um, that private and general, that some people thought that general meant that it went to the whole class and private meant that it went to the individual student and didn't know that students weren't getting feedback. So we want to make sure that that is not what's happening because if students aren't applying feedback, which I'm sure we've never had a student that we spent a bunch of time on feedback and then they didn't apply any of it. I'm sure that's never happened to y'all. It's happened to me a lot. Um, that you do a lot of feedback and then you realize they're not looking at it. Some of that may be that we're not putting it in the right place. So just kind of double check and make sure that the student feedback is going in general and any private messages that you want to yourself or other graders are going in private. So I'm going to show you what those look like, but I wanted to make sure that you got the what that what they were and what was different about them <clears throat> so when we go in here to enter grades and we are on this page and this is our our general feedback page from the enter grades thing here you have the overall feedback so this is where um students see this uh, no, that's the overall. I went in the wrong one, didn't I? I hit the wrong button, didn't I? I did it again. It's down here. It's this button. Uh, hit the little, when you hit the little um, pencil in the specific feedback, this is the pop-up box that, that you want to look at. So feedback is the one that students see this. Students actually see the other one too, if you want to have something that goes to the entire class. Um, and then private, it says anyone who can grade this activity can see these comments. So only people that grade it can see it, but we just wanted to make sure that we had cleared up any confusion or misconceptions about what that looked like. So um, this is for all graders. Um, and so that is now in there and where it shows you students see this, that is what the student will see when they go and look at their grade. That's where they will see that feedback um, and what it is that you typed in there. The other information they will never see, uh, but the other graders will see it. So we just wanted to kind of clarify that one a little bit. We have some instructions and information about that as well in our faculty resources on our website if anybody has any questions. Okay, this is the one that made it seven because I am excited about this one. And it's funny because I don't actually even give quizzes in any of my classes that I teach. Um, but I think this is like the most awesome, fun little thing that has been added. Like it could change your life. Um, so don't feel like you need to raise your hand, but if you give quizzes in any of your D2L classes and you have ever had a student that had a time accommodation, you have to apply that time accommodation um, from the Disability Access Center. You have to apply that to every single quiz, test, everything that you have in your class. I'm about to change your life. So I just need you to embrace that something's about to happen, that you may not come back from as quickly as you were prepared to. So do you see this thing that's right here in the middle of the page that never used to be there before that says accommodations users with accommodations? Um, that is so that you can filter it at a later point once you have done some things with it. And I had to kind of work at it because it only works in an active class and you can't see the students in my classes. So we're going to give me an accommodation. Um, so the way that you do this is you click that drop down arrow next to the person in the class list. So you're going to go to the class list, you're going to scroll down to the student that needs the accommodation, and you're going to click this awesome, awesome box right here that says edit accommodations. And this adorable pop up box is going to come up. And you're going to go, what? Modify time limit, extra time. If it's a 30 minute quiz and they're allowed to have twice the time, the extra time is 30 minutes. You hit save and it would apply to all of them. 
Now, if you have different links, you're going to still have to go in and do some manual override. Um, but if you are somebody who uses quizzes or exams or tests that you always give them the same amount of time. So like say you have um, four exams in your semester and they're always 60 minutes in length and you have a student that needs um, half again time or uh, double time or any of those things like that, you can go in right there and you can click that little button and you apply the minutes and it applies to every single one of the quizzes in your class. You can have that and set it if you have a bunch that are those times. And then if you have a couple of outlier times, you can go in and manually override the one or two. So if you're somebody who has um, some little quizzes, like summative quizzes um, and formative quizzes throughout the semester, but then have bigger exams as well, you could apply to the one that you have the greatest number and then go in and manually override the one or two that need a different amount of time. But this can save you a lot of time. If you have ever had to do this and you're somebody that has several quizzes or you have multiple students that need accommodations, this will save you quite a bit of time. Um, so this is one of the new things that we just wanted to make sure that you knew about before you went in and started like manually setting a bunch of times and a bunch of things like that. Um, it is only available in quizzes. This is usually a question that we get and it's only like three days old. Um, it is only available in quizzes uh, and that is because quizzes is where that accommodation most frequently lives. Um, in, especially in an asynchronous online class, your discussion or your assignment folder or those things are probably open for quite an extended period of time. They're open for a week or two weeks or the whole semester. Um, however it is that you have that set up, they're, they're set for an extended period of time. So the accommodation applies to the time frames that happen for tests and quizzes. So um, that's why this was where they started first for the universal accommodation. So um, I hope that that saves at least one of you like five minutes this semester um, so that you can have that little thing that's brand new. It's part of D2L's attempt to really meet the needs of our students. Um, so that is that one. Um, next, we have um, integrations. So a lot happened this summer in terms of integrations. Um, I'm up to like seven tabs for D2L. This thing's going to like have it come apart in a little bit. Um, okay, so there's some integrations that happened this summer. Um, obviously, we were having a little bit of fun picking ones to show you. Um, so the very first one that I wanted to show you is where I'm not going to click on it to, uh, I think you should see that tambourines all have different sounds because tambourines all sound different. According to LinkedIn learning that is straight up embedded in your class now. You don't have to go out using a link to LinkedIn learning. The student doesn't have to log in again uh, because they are already logged into D2L and it is directly integrated into your um, classroom. Their single sign-on that got them into their D2L classroom also gets them into this LinkedIn learning. So that extra like three steps that we were having students do when we were using LinkedIn learning, we embed it straight in. So I'm going to show you how that works and what that looks like um, here in just a second. The other ones um, that, that was created in the same general manner um, is with the EBSCO host through the library. Uh, so that if you have been um, downloading uh, PDFs or been doing links that go out to the library and students click on them and then they have to log into the library again and then they have to go to the article and then sometimes they have to click again to get to another article. There is your article um, because again you have your single sign on the student is already in. Um, so you are literally just taking this article and you're dropping it into your class and the student will read it right there in their class. This makes it much, much, much better um, for a student that is having to potentially use a device that is a mobile device 
to do some of their reading because they're not having to click in and out. And while we may not want our students to take a whole class on their phone, um, we are aware that there are some things that based on what's happening in their lives or things they've got going on, sometimes their phone is where they have time and ability to do some of these things. So this really helps, especially with Pulse and with um, having some mobile needs and things met. And y'all know once you click, you get to the third click, they stop clicking and they tell you they couldn't do it. And by they, I mean, I do the same thing. Once I get to three, I'm like, mm, I'm, I'm done looking. Uh, this takes that out because it is directly linked in your classroom. Um, so you could see where it was. It's just in a module. And then it's literally dropped in there exactly the same way that a link would be or a video would be or any of those things like that would be. Um, and a couple of, of notes about it. Uh, when you drop in a, a document, if you drop in a LinkedIn Learning, any of those things like that, the information underneath it, like this one, tambourines don't all sound the same. You can actually go in and update that information into your own D2L. So if you want to add an extra statement there, if you want to add a comment about, hey, make sure you do this before you do this other thing, um, you can add that right there into that little piece of information. And then you simply would update it and it would be in that space. Now I'm going to show y'all how to add um, a, either one because it's the same process for both. Um, but I'm going to show y'all how to add them. So if you are playing around D2 D2L shell or you have an article that you need to put into your classes that open at midnight, by the way, in just a few hours classes. Um, We'll touch on that again in a second, but midnight. Um, if you have an article that you want to put in there or LinkedIn learning that you presently have that you would rather have embedded than it being a link that they go out, you click on add existing activities. And here is the EBSCO host one, the EBSCO library. And then if we go down just a little bit further, there's the LinkedIn learning one. So I'm going to click on that one. And the library one looks exactly the same. It pops up as a box like this. And then you type in whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, um, how about music production? Since we were looking at tambourines, I feel like music production works. And then you literally just scroll down and look for the one that you want to add. Um, the instructional designer in me is having a come apart right now because I didn't do this before I looked at it. And this one is three hours and 40 minutes. And this one is four hours and 48 minutes. So I have to hope that it's like a whole thing. And it's like, here's this five minute and then this 10 minute and then this five minute. Because I hope it's not four hours and 48 minutes because we wouldn't make that. Uh, so we go through and we pick the one we want. So let's go with uh, first steps. You click add. It tells you it's successfully added. You click confirm. And then your D2L updates. And we scroll right on down here where audio and music production careers first steps has plopped itself into our D2L classroom and ready for our use. If we don't like where it is, as a reminder, you click these little eight dots and you drag them. And you can put it anywhere else you want on the screen. Uh, so that is how you do LinkedIn learning and the EBSCO library. Uh, they both work exactly the same way. The other integration that we wanted to talk to you about um, is the OneDrive integration. Uh, and there's a couple of things to, to note on that. So um, OneDrive is also listed under the add existing activities. By the way, the teams were still working on this. You can add it, but it doesn't, it doesn't always quite do right. So um, wait on adding teams and keep doing the zoom ones for a little bit if you want um so OneDrive, we would click on OneDrive, and it pops up and it connects to your OneDrive. Uh, mine is mad because i've logged in and out like five times um but it connects to your personal OneDrive. so what makes that really cool like this is my OneDrive. Um, so now you know all the things that I do all day, every day. Um, so when you click on your OneDrive, it then opens up and it lets you see the things that are available in your OneDrive for you to be able to share in your class. You can also add a whole folder. Um, this is great if you have um, big content that you want to share so that it 
the students aren't having to, it doesn't take forever for it to load and it doesn't take forever for it to download for them to view it because it lives in a cloud. Um, it's also great if you have um, a folder of things that you want them to kind of get in and see some examples, you can put that right in there. Um, so that is one of the great ways that you can add the OneDrive straight in and it puts those documents in the same way um, that other things add in. So I chose the OER for the new faculty orientation. And then it is now right down here. And if we were, oh, if we were to click on the right spot, if we were to click on that, it would then open up and everybody would be able to see it. Um, ASAP is slow. So, and there it is. So there's your document. So you could actually share things this way, especially if it's something that's big and it's going to take a while to load. Um, this is great if you are in like a, uh, well, like the music production or a uh, big art um, or big projects that people have been working on for a long time that really take up a lot of bandwidth. Something like that is really great. Um, within that same vein of OneDrive, you can create OneDrive folders that you share with your classes um, that they are then able to load some things in if you need to, because those are also through our single sign-on. They are able to use those, especially if there's something that you really need to come in from multiple places. But I wanted to show you in Dropbox, in terms of OneDrive, um, that when you click on the assignment, uh, when the student clicks on the assignment, um, that's hysterical, whatever that PDF is, it says shenanigans, y'all. Um, so when we're looking at our folder, um, and if somebody's, I did a really good job with this directions right here, um, blah, 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 assignment. Down here at the bottom, this is the part I want you to, to see, you are able to, um, upload any of these things um used for attachments so you can upload files you can um link to um other existing activities you can do web links out to the internet uh, i don't encourage this one because this one's not ferpa protected on campus um but this is your OneDrive. so if you have things that you want to attach for a student in the instructions so especially if it's something like a really big video or um, some sort of graphic or something that takes up a lot of space, attaching it as a OneDrive helps you, it helps them, it makes it run a little bit faster. Students also have the ability to attach things from their from a OneDrive because they all have a OneDrive. So they can either load it as an uploaded cloud document or they can load the link when they do submissions. Uh, and part of the reason that I'm making sure to tell you all about that is um, sometimes we have things that that faculty want students to submit that are just too big for the size that D2L lets you attach uh, or submit into a Dropbox. When that happens, being able to use the student's OneDrive and then share that link with you directly means that they don't have to come up with creative ways in order to get that video to share or to get that music file to share or whatever it is that's this big huge thing they can just drop that link to their OneDrive and then you can actually click on that link and be taken straight to their document uh, so that helps you a little bit you don't have to come up with quite as many creative ways of um, how they get something to you um, you don't need to go out and create um, some sort of shared space out there in the interweb that isn't secured through our singer sign-on and therefore not FERPA protected this protects you and your students if you use the resources that are a part of our single sign-on in order for them to share information and documents. If you go out and you create a Google Drive, you are kind of opening yourself up um, because are you the security expert for Google? Um, are you going to make sure that students' information is not incorrectly shared? Are you going to verify that um, their FERPA is protected, that there's not some hacker that's going to come in. If you are using OneDrive through D2L for them to submit those, you are covered by um, the decisions of the institution to be in contract with Microsoft Office and integrate these activities into our D2L shell. So that was part of why we wanted to show you that one. Um, so that was the integrations. And then the last one is Insights Portal. 
I'm so excited about Insights Portal. So to get to insert Insights Portal, uh, you will actually be on your main D2L homepage. It is not in a class. So if you are on your main D2L homepage and you have the stuff up here at the top um, that I'm going to have slightly different stuff from you, but you should have Insights Portal. When you click on Insights Portal, this is some of that data y'all have been asking for for like, I don't know, ever. Um, this is some of that data that y'all have wanted all along about engagement, learner engagement, assessment quality, all of those things like that that y'all have been wanting to know a little bit more about how you could get it. Here it is. So when you click on any of these, and I encourage you to go ahead and click on any one of them that you want to click on, um, when they open up, um, mine might have reset, but we'll see. Um, so it tells you it's set to the default view. Um, so just acknowledge that. Uh, the reason that I wanted to show you that this is what it looks like, it doesn't look like this is doing anything. Um, and so I'm going to tell you to go up to the top where it says semesters. Um, I don't have any data for 2027. Um, I mean, I feel like I'm a fairly advanced individual in terms of how well I do things in D2L, but I am not five years ahead. Um, so you're going to want to uncheck the 2027, and then you're going to want to scroll until you get to one that is a semester that you would actually like to see the data. So I am looking at summer 2022, and this is my data from one of my classes in summer 2022, because I looked at engagement overall, you can break things down by class, you can break things down by activities and assessments, it just depends on which page you go in, but this is my overall engagement in the summer of 2022. Um, so, that is your insights portal. I strongly encourage you to get in there and play around with it a little bit. Um, don't, get sucked into this wormhole six days before classes start. Um, but you should definitely check it out, start to figure out some things that you might want to know. Um, if you have questions as the semester goes on, this might be a great place for you to start to look. It can give you some of that content and that information about uh, student participation uh, and alignment with their grade because it's right there. Uh, it shows you about um, where your grades are in terms of the level of student participation. So um, that kind of helps you get a little bit of extra data that you're looking for. Uh, and it is it is per faculty member. So you can see yours. Um, the bigger data things that you pull out of D2L are universal to the campus. Uh, so it's all students, all classes, all faculty. This gives you that opportunity to see yours and specifically yours every semester, every class, every activity. Um, so those are our five, I mean seven. Um, and so I'm actually going to stop my share uh, and then uh, open the door for any questions that anybody might have. Because I'm sure I was great and nobody has any questions. Was there anything that I didn't answer uh, Karen or Tara that I need to touch on. I see that there was a lot of chat going on, but did I miss anything important? I mean, I'm sure it was important, but did I fly past anything and not answer it? Okay. What questions does anybody have? Did I just overwhelm y'all and you're like, it's too much. It will be recorded on our YouTube channel with tags. I have a question. Sure. It's the same question I asked you earlier. Have you found the answer about being able to see if students have read the feedback you leave on assignments, like specifically discussion posts? And I know, I know, but if I tell them, did you read the feedback I gave you? I mean, I just, I just, I just want to know. I just want to know what happened. Well, happens you can tell on, on <laughs> assignment folders. Um, you can see it there. Um, so Tara and I were just at the D2L International Convention um, mm -hmm. in Boston, um, which we went to that Red Sox game on Friday night where they set an MLB record for the worst game like in recent history. Uh, Y'all should go check it out sometime. Um, 
we asked specifically about that. Um, and no, it doesn't mean that that won't be something in the future, but right now you can't see if students have read the feedback for discussion. Fine then, but thank you for asking. Absolutely. I mean, we ask it right there at that in the middle of that thing. And there were a bunch of people like, yeah, why can't you see that? So the the person that works for D2L was writing it down. Okay. Um, so right. hopefully that means that and like old journal. school D2L, somebody writing it down with pencil and paper. But yeah, it <laughs> they did. They wrote it down. She wrote it down and walked off with it and was like, I'm going to ask about this. So maybe. OK. All right. Thank you. That's all. You're welcome. What other questions do you have? Anybody? On, on the yes. insights portal um, process, you change it by, by semester, but can you look at individual classes or it's just all of the classes? Uh, you can here. I'll, um, I can show y'all. Uh, so you can then look at it in terms of your individual classes as well. So I do it by semester and then I do it by class. Um, so, cause that, that's easier for me to find it. Um, and especially if you have been teaching here for a long time, um, if you go and try to look up just one class, um, it's going to take you a while to, to go through them. So I suggest going through and doing semester first and then clicking, uh, the, the, I only taught one class this summer. So this, mine is very limited. Um, but for, for you, if you, um, are teaching a full load, doing it by semester first, then allows you to do it by class um, on the other side. And you can, uh, there you go. So there's my one class that I taught this summer. Now y'all know that I taught online course development uh, and educational leadership this summer. Um, but that's my recommendation is to do semester first and then come over and click uh, and you use the drop down arrow to open it up and then you can literally pick your section from there. And this is not your CRN. This, the numbers is not your CRN. So uh, have y'all ever looked up at the top of your D2L where it has the elearn.mtsu.edu slash D2L slash app slash home slash 57 million other things. And then it has a bunch of numbers at the end that you never knew what those numbers were for. That is your OU number. This piece of information, not helpful that it's an OU number. However, that's what that number is. So if you click on it, when you look up at your URL at the top, it will give you that number. So if you're teaching five of the exact same class and you're like, I don't know which one it is. When you're on that class, just look up at that URL and it will tell you which one uh, you need to click on to get there. Did that help? Did that answer that? Uh-uh. Okay. I only teach one, so I can't show you what it looks like when there's more than one. And, and I was looking back at my spring because in the summer I just did one, but I in the spring I wanted to look at how the winter semester one did. And, uh, um, and is oh, that's as spring, right? But it doesn't show up. It's as, in spring and it shows in my spring. So I, it shows that I have six instead of five. Yeah. But, um, but instead of in lieu of a summer one. So that was fine. But I, I just trying to pull it out and look at it and I still can't figure it out. So that's okay. it won't let you click just one. Is it showing uh, you all six if you use uh, that little arrow? Summary, and then I don't know what, what to hear. Oh, and I don't, are you on the same, are you on I'm engagement? On, I'm on engagement. Okay. And you, you're on the summary view here? Summary and, view, yes. And you did semester spring? Uh, yes. And then you clicked here and you drop, did a drop down? I almost no, wait, said wait, 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 I can't see, down. wait, 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 you're, okay. Oh, and sorry. You, Okay. Yeah. Do the semester first and then do the org unit. Right. Second and you select, you can use the little arrow drop down that's on the right hand side okay. of that drop down and that will create a list of the individual classes. And then you can click or so I am told being that I only teach one at a time. I've only ever seen one. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, these are crazy names oh yeah, yeah yeah sometimes I don't I mean academic enrichment business management university college university specific university studies yeah I don't know I okay so that's where you said that ID number was yes. 
the eight it's you can't uh i don't know that you can tell on mine because it's so stinking small but up at the top there's a number that says four three six six four no high numbers four three six six two three six and ou that's because that is my ou number now mine is all messed up because we're on a bunch of different pages on a normal i'll even show you what it looks like on a d2l page so you can actually just see um what one looks like kim you're talking about the url for the page yeah up in the url at the top um like the actual page url not your crn the actual page url um so if we click on um i mean we'll just click on our template y'all can see it there so on the template when we click on the mtsu online template oh which by the way because I forgot. In the news announcement, I got so distracted by the pronouns, I forgot to tell you that the um, covering basic needs has been updated to just have the MT one stop um, so that it's more universal in case there's changes. Um, and it is also in that standard template as well as a welcome announcement um, that are all in that standard template for news announcements that y'all are welcome to steal. But up in the URL of this page, it has the elearn.mtsu.edu slash d2l slash home, and then it has numbers out after it. Those numbers are the numbers you associate with in the Insight Portal, because those are D2L numbers, CRN numbers are MTSU numbers, and D2L doesn't know how to read MTSU numbers, so it's based on the that number at the end of the URL. So if you want to look at one specific class, I would say open that class up and figure out what that number is and then go match it to that number. I didn't say it was super easy. I just said it's now there. <laughs> it's better than it was. We didn't have it at all before, so we're winning, right? We can at least look at it and maybe figure it out. It's very new, so there's still a lot of learning on our end on it, too. Um, but that is how you see it. What other questions do y'all have? I'll stop my share again. So. And it doesn't even have to be any of the 7, 8, 9, will 10, be, 11, um, 12. Will you be requesting um, assignments to be on the um, accommodation part process? Because that I get, I mean, it's my letters on these are, you know, two extra days on every written assignment. Um, and then it'll be a percentage on quizzes. My quizzes for ethics doesn't matter because they're untimed. You right. Know, you get three attempts. So that's for Joe average, you know. Do you need more? Let me know. But I can add it, but I normally have had people say no yours your class is fine um but it's the in the <laughs> your, your <laughs> thing is breaking up so it's <laughs> hey kim question kim uh, um, hang on um so vicky i do think um that that is a long term they did it with quizzes first um i we can probably check pi and see um see if it's in there um that is not an excuse for us to eat pie um it is the the project exchange that's in there um that's for d2l so it's actually called pie um yeah or we can all go eat pie i mean i could totally make that decision as well if y'all just tell us where to go we'll go use some pie uh cornell cornell uh carlos did you have a, a question yes i had a question early uh, when I share my link at the end, uh, it only searches for courses. I do have, I have built collections with two or three small courses. So I share just one, that collection, but I don't see a way to share my collection with the student. Your in link, personal? In, in link, yes, LinkedIn collections. Are they you ones that you wrote or are they ones no, that No, no. You... Collections is when you take two or three courses and put mm -hmm. it together. I do it that way because if I create a collection, say, for 3,200, a class, I can periodically change those if I found better courses and put it in there and the link remains the same. It just, it just like, uh, allows me to 
randomly next semester I want to use this course instead of this one that I used last semester. So I, it doesn't allow me access to my collection to share directly in B12. It only seems to allow access to a specific courses. Maybe that's something that we can research with them. You, you can add a collection of multiple courses if you do not do it through the LTI because the LTI is adding a grade item. And if you have multiple courses, it's confusing it. So you mm -hmm. can still add no, no, a collection. No, no, no. no as grade a item. No, 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 no grade I'm sorry? Item. Yeah, I don't, I don't grade it. It's just as, a, as an option for them to learn more about certain topics. Yes, but if you, but if you put it as an LTI, it's going to create a great item. So if it's a collection, you'll still want to put it in as the link to that collection versus yeah, that's an what LTI I do. item. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't that's change. What I do. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't change. The LTI integration is specifically so that faculty can now connect great items specifically to LinkedIn Learning. Right. Okay. So if it's like a participation thing or if there actually is an activity in it that they want to give them a grade or if you complete this LinkedIn Learning course, you get a certificate and when you get the certificate, you get 100 points for that activity or whatever it is that you do that can now happen without you having to have one open and the grades open and going back and forth and trying to match it it automatically does it but with a collection because that's multiple activities it it does it can't do that it doesn't know how to do that so hope that helped you would still have to do it it's just as a link what other questions does anybody have It doesn't have to be over these seven. If y'all have other questions, we're here. <laughs> uh, I am going to go ahead and stop our recording um, just in case anybody has additional questions and we're getting right at the end time. So um, I'm going to stop recording, but we're not going to go anywhere. So um, we'll stay. So if you have questions, you can stay and hang out with us for a little bit and we'll answer any questions we can. Thank y'all for coming today. <laughs>